Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. You want to say that with me? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Welcome all of you this morning. Uh, this was kind of a last minute plan and I'm so grateful for all of you for being here. We didn't know whether we'd have five or 15 or 25 or whatever and I'm really excited to see all the smiling faces. Pastor Denise is going to rest for a few moments, and Pastor Sandy is on her way from Triumph, so you get me to, to start things out this morning. As you are able, would you like to stand and go through the confession and absolution? Our focus this morning as we are outside, and I think the birds are singing, to, to focus on God's beautiful earth. The Almighty God, creator and sustainer of the universe and all who dwell within it has called us to this place to be strengthened for service in our stewardship of the land. Recognizing our shortcomings and our failures, we come to God for forgiveness. All too often we have forgotten that this world belongs not to us but to God. For demanding cheap food, for the lack of support for those on the land, and our lack of interest beyond ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. For times when out of ignorance or other concerns, we have used and abused the land and erosion has swept the good soil away. Forgive us, Lord. For our refusal to see the connections between our everyday life and the starvation of millions, and for acceptance of hopelessness and lack of faith in you. Forgive us, Lord. For our waste of your precious gift of water, for the pollution and destruction of water, for allowing people to die for lack of clean water, forgive us, Lord. For all our sins, those against you, O Lord, those against our neighbors and those against the land, forgive us, O Lord. For all the things we have not done and task not done well, our impatience towards you and the people around us, difficult and strained relationships with others, and lack of faith, hope, and trust in your grace and power. Forgive us, Lord. At this time, we will sing uh, All Things Bright and Beautiful from page 767. You should have a blue hymnal. Um, The children that came in, there are some coloring pages and crayons and sidewalk chalk in the back on one of the back tables. Help yourself. And our organist this morning is our very own Jane Baird, who recorded the music for us. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Merciful Creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us read in unison Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all the deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all birds, kings and all seas, with animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel to him. Praise the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with the fourth chapter. He also said, The kingdom of God is if, as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself from the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, all once at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have two speakers today to welcome to the podium, and both are going to speak about our creation, God's wonderful creation. And I think we're going to invite Fred Kaminke to the podium first. Um, Fred, Fred, as many of you know, is a longtime farmer in the Earlville area, and he is going to speak on what it means to glorify God in his life's work as a farmer. Fred. <laughs> Well, I'm not a public speaker by any stretch of imagination. The being a farmer is just in a class by itself, really. You are you rely only on God's grace. He gives you the rain, he gives you the sun, he gives you the weather, and you have to take what you get. You don't get to choose because it it comes with whatever you're going to get. It'll happen, it'll happen. You have to have faith in God that when you plant, you did the right thing. When you harvest, if the wind don't come or it uh, takes it down, you just have to go with what, you, what you've got. I remember uh, uh, way back when, this would be 1943, I was uh, just 10 years old, this would be wartime. And mom and dad, mom and I were bringing the cattle across the road to be milked. The 48 across the road was always pasture. 
and you, you know, they're just the two of us. And we got them, I think it was 17 cattle, four or five to be milked. And we started them for the, across the road. There's one old white cow that you always the one that you had eyes about that big around that when they were going that way, she was going that way. <laughs> and lo and behold, we got them all the way across the road to the gate that went into where the uh, bunk was. And she turned around and took off for the back south. At that time, a 39 Ford was going to slip around beside us, and they met in the middle of the road. Kapow! And she went down on the road. And of course, the four guys that were in it were pretty well inebriated. And they bounced around and inside of that Ford, and the headlights, one was headed for Mars, and one was headed for Jupiter. <laughs> the radiator was all munchy. And they they come out, and they were upset, the driver was, and he tied in the mother. And I'd rather face a wrangly grizzly bear than I would my mother, because she was not one to back up, period. And then we were lucky, Tony Love stopped. He was a state cop, lived in Mendota. And he said, Grace, I'll take care of this. You get the cows in. And about that time, this white cow got up off the pavement looked around and whew, right back into the barn where she was supposed to be. <laughs> Never heard her a bit. But it sure didn't do that for it any good. Now I'm going to update you to the, just a couple days ago. My son-in-law was going to the sale barn to pick up a couple calves for the for butcher. Well, one didn't want to get in the shed, get in the trailer. So they lost it over by the sale barn. And of course Jim started running after it, but you find out that he can go faster than you can. And Connie said that uh, it was night before last. They called at midnight. They saw the steer. Of course, they called the police and all. And uh, 3 o'clock, they called. He was by the sale barn. So they loaded up four-wheelers and all, everybody they could in the trailer. And he was by some other cattle. And it... He said after four times around the sale barn, he finally decided the trailer was the only safe place, so he ran in the trailer. And they, but you imagine with all the fire trucks and the police cars, and there's sirens going. And the, they, the poor steer probably thought the Armageddon was on its way here. But that's part of what the farmers, they got him home. He got with the one that he raised with, and he was fine. So in both cases... It seemed like a catastrophe, but yet it turned out all right. If you if you just reach for God, he'll he's there. It's just that we don't seem to hear him. We uh, are worried about our own things. As my mother used to say, "Don't worry, Fred. Things could be worse." And I didn't worry, and they got worse. <laughs> Thank you. I learned this year during the Lenten season when we did some sharing during our Wednesday night services that this man knows the Bible forward and backward. So if you ever have a question, he is the authority. I was amazed. So when I offered to share my own story of creation and care or whatever, uh, I didn't know I was going to be helping with the rest of the service. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to listen to me again. Um, I'm not a farm girl. I've lived in Illinois all my adult life, and prior to that I lived in states sort of near here, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, Alabama. But my favorite place on earth is the ocean, the beach. And I don't get there very often, but since my retirement I've managed to go a few times. And we talk about being grounded. Some of you could take your shoes off and stand in that grass and feel grounded, the presence of God. And yes, I, I hear God this morning. The birds are crazy. The wind, you know, uh, the birds in this neighborhood, because I only live two blocks away, are busy all day and all night. And four o'clock in the morning when I'm out with the dog, it's, it's amazing how loud it is. But I digress. When I stand on a beach and look at the ocean that goes on and on and on, 
infinitely, I see the power of God. Because I don't think you can stand there and not feel God's creation. You have to believe when you... No one else could have created anything like that. The roaring waves, the winds, the amount of animals there that we don't even probably know all about, the depth. But it's, it's the place where I feel God right there with me. And again, it's not the Midwest, and there's beautiful things here, but that's where God touches me. Now, if any of you have a story that you would like to share... Pastor, do you want to share yours? I'm going to hold off, okay. but I'd love to hear other people's stories. So if anybody would like to share something about their connection with nature, the podium is yours. I got one. Especially on Father's Day, I think about my dad. And we raised a lot of hogs when we were young. And... Uh, we spent a lot of time in the farming house. We had a sow that had trouble, or, or, uh, you know, he was worried about, or a new sow that that uh, was having a first time litter. We spent a lot of time playing cards and and uh, sitting in the farming house, you know, in the middle of the night. And I learned a lot from my dad in those, in those you know, in the times in the middle of the night. And uh, uh, you learned about birthing and creation and and uh, all that stuff that uh, most people never got a chance to see the city kids never got a really a chance to see that kind of stuff but uh, how how uh, how a sow would take care you know if, if it was out in the field it would be nesting and 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 thing before you brought them into the farming house and and how all things worked and it it was pretty amazing to see that kind of stuff when you were in when you were little but uh my dad was a was a good farmer, and and he was he was pretty conscientious of what you know what went on in in, in the land, and and uh, you know they they taught you how to take care of the land and uh, and animals, and you know we hear all this stuff about animal rights and stuff like that, but but uh, these people they they really do care about their animals. I mean they're they're not just for food or butchering or whatever. But they, I think they, you know, generally do care about that. And on this Father's Day, I'd like to thank my dad for that. Becky, before I start my part of this, I have to tell you that I was out there at 4 o'clock this morning, and and the birds were very busy. It was a beautiful morning, and they were very good. And I would tell you that my own appreciation for God's creation shows up. Now, I'm like you, and I wish it would rain. Okay, I'm, I'm going with that, and I've asked God for that, and my folks will tell you that I pray for that almost every Sunday lately. But I noticed also that the sunset right now, is particularly gorgeous. And it's particularly gorgeous because some of those particles that would have been washed away by the rain haven't been washed away. And so it's made the sunset even prettier than it's been. And I continue to marvel at what God can do in the creation that we're part of. Now I'm going to attempt to hold on to all my pieces of paper here and do my part. Can you hear me with my teacher voice back there? Okay. Some of you can help us get this all back into the appropriate bag. When we're done. <laughs> hey, you know what? It didn't go anywhere else, so we're good. Okay. All right. Will you join me in the blessing this morning? God, you have given us these seeds. They are the fruit of the 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 They are the future. They are the fruit of the May the miracle of life within these seeds burst forth, yielding a bountiful harvest. Bless these seeds. created and 
and given us this soil. The soil serves as a medium for the seed to grow. It cleans water. It regulates climate. It provides warmth, nourishment, and support so that new life may emerge. Bless the soil that it may feed and nourish the seed. Bless those who work the soil and harvest the produce. your creation. Water gives sustenance and nourishment to the soil and the seed. Bless the soil and the seed with gentle rain. Bless this water. Let it come as rain at the right time, in the proper amount, so that the seed may flourish and grow. In your mercy, send us favorable weather, so that the harvest will be bountiful. God, our creator, you have ordered seed time, sunshine, rain, and harvest. You have created the seed, soil, and water so that there may be food for all your people. May we honor and care for these elements to sustain our earthly life. As the food nourishes our body, may we be filled with praise and thanksgiving for our creator. Amen. Father's Day, and we do want to take a moment to recognize the fathers among us. So I'm going to ask those of you who are fathers to stand for just a second. Just a second. Thank you. You can sit down. Now I have some questions I have to ask you before I offer this blessing for all of us to all of you. What are you doing for lunch today? Fred, that sounds like a good thing to me. See, I, I, every year on Father's Day at the Methodist Church, I always ask this question, and here's what the response usually is. They're cooking. On Mother's Day, we take them out. And on Father's Day, we tell Dad he has to fire up the grill. And I know one of my people who's missing this morning called me last night and said, well, I was coming until the kids said they're coming over and I'm cooking hamburgers. That's the way it works on Father's Day. Somehow that just seems to be the nature of the beast. We give thanks for all of you. Not just for firing up the grill. 
for being here with all of us. Let's pray. Father God, creator and sustainer, we praise you that your care and protection surround us like a father. On this Father's Day, we remember all the people who have nurtured us, especially the important men in our lives. Those who have seen not just with their eyes, but with their heart. Hear our prayers for fathers around the world. We remember fathers whose families are torn apart by jealousy and fighting and misunderstanding. We remember fathers who are older, but who still bear the responsibility of raising children and grandchildren. And we remember fathers who mean well, but make mistakes. We remember fathers who are unable to support their children and are forced to make unimaginable decisions because of those financial struggles. We remember men who, because of various circumstances, are unable to be fathers. We remember fathers who have adopted children and fathers who have given up their rights as fathers. We remember fathers who rejoice in the achievements of their children, who joyfully watch a new generation take hold. We remember fathers who are single parents, who through personal sacrifice and perseverance provide a loving home for their children. We remember fathers who obviously watch their children suffer and die from malnutrition because of famine or drought or flood or war. We pray for the fathers where recent disasters have occurred and those taking their children into hope on the high seas. We remember fathers whose children are sick or disabled and who will try anything to cure or help them. We pray for fathers and their children around the world who are caught in the terrors of violence and living in fear. We weep for the fathers of those who inflict violence on others. Nurturing God, we thank you for those who have nurtured us. Open our eyes to the plight of so many fathers and mothers around the world for whom life is difficult. Help us share your love and mercy with them. And this morning we remember a father among us who is not with us today. Will you join me in a moment of silence and remembrance of Darren Krask, a father among us who was a father to so many of our kids even though he was not their biological father. Merciful God, Father of us all, honor our prayers spoken and unspoken, humbly lifted to you in faith. Amen. I can do this. It'll be fine. Let us pray for the people of God and for all those in need of God's help and comfort. Holy and mighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit blowing across the dark waters of chaos and brought forth light dry land, and life. We pray for the care and preservation of your creation. Creator God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, wash us clean in your baptismal waters and grant us salvation. Will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I have to share with you one thing that that we do at the Methodist Church and why we do it. You'll notice in the Lord's Prayer there is not... A comma after it says, and lead us. But we put one in there. So we read it and say, lead us, not into temptation. Because we don't believe, based on something that we we learned in a Bible study a couple of years ago, that God would never lead us into temptation. So he wouldn't do that. We're asking him to lead us into the things he wants to lead us into. So if you hear us pause after we say, lead us, that's what's going on. We learned that in Bible study a a few years ago. Do you want to do the benediction? Okay. Before we conclude with our benediction, um, just a couple of announcements, and maybe Pastor Sandy has some as well. Um, First of all, I wanted to mention that we are not collecting an offering today, but we encourage everyone to contribute their offerings to their own congregation. So um, please don't forget to do that. Our our congregations are counting on your generosity. And then um, just a couple of other announcements. 
um, this afternoon. We will um, put to rest our, um, our brother in Christ, um, John Gast, in a graveside service. And I also need to acknowledge another um, funeral that will take place this week for Pat Gast. And um, Sam, I don't know, do we, do we know when that will be yet? It's going to be a private service just for the family. Uh, and the okay, all right. Um, okay, um, with that, we will then close with our benediction, and I'll ask that you stand as you are able. May God, the Holy Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, bless the pastures and meadows, all growing grass and green fields. May the soil be wholesome and the crops good. May the weather be favorable and the workers of good heart. And may God, who gives us breath and life to the sower, multiply the seed sown and increase its fruit. May God be with us and among us and around us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.